The Amazon spans 6.7 million kilometers squared, covering much of northwestern Brazil and into South American countries. It has thousands of rivers and is also the world's largest tropical rainforest. So you can imagine there are lots of terrifying creatures hiding in there. From red-bellied piranhas with menacing teeth to electric eels delivering a painful shock, here are 20 deadliest monsters of the Amazon. Number 20. Piraiba Catfish the Piraiba catfish from the Brachyplatostoma genus of catfish really doesn't look all that scary. I mean, sure, it's a pretty huge fish, grown up to 12 feet or 3.6 meters long, but it doesn't have any noticeable terrifying teeth or hunger for human flesh. But looks can certainly be deceiving. This type of catfish, which is found in the Amazon and Orinoco basins and other bodies of water in South America, can be a man-eater. There have actually been recorded incidents of them preying on humans. For example, on the TV series River Monsters, a fisherman was found and he had been swallowed head first up to his waist by the Piraiba catfish. The fish and the man both died. But fortunately, we generally have the upper hand, and Piraiba catfish are quite an important source of food. They are caught in the thousands of metric tons for export and local consumption. Normally, they are caught in drift nets and long lines, as well as with ropes, fish hooks, and harpoons. So while they might be capable of killing and eating us, we return the favor by killing and eating them. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. Amazonian Giant Centipede Centipedes don't sound like something you should fear. Sure, they have lots of legs, but they otherwise seem pretty harmless. Not the Amazonian giant centipede, though. This guy is definitely not what you would call harmless. They are large, scary, and predatory arthropods native to the Caribbean and South American forests. They grow up to 12 inches long and can be found in a variety of colors, such as yellow, black, brown, and red. They often have dark stripes and yellow legs. Even though they are insects, they are carnivores. If they can overpower and kill anything, they will. So everything from bats, mice, snakes, lizards, and birds, to small mammals, tarantulas, scorpions, spiders, and other insects are on the menu. Oh, and did we mention they're human killers? Yeah, that's what makes them one of the deadliest monsters of the Amazon. There's at least one death attributed to these multi-legged murderers. In 2014, a four-year-old child from Venezuela died after one was hiding in an open soda can and came out and delivered a fatal bite. If you were to see one of these on your adventures through the Amazon, run away fast, because you just don't know what they're capable of. Number 18. Black Cayman. When an animal has a bite so strong that it can shatter the shell of a turtle, you know you should stay away from it. Oh, and the fact that this particular animal has been responsible for dozens of attacks on humans, some of which were fatal. We're talking about the black caiman, the largest species of the Alligatoridae family that lives in the flooded savannas of the Amazon basin and can grow up to 17 feet long. Many have also weighed as much as a thousand pounds. Black caimans are generally not as aggressive as other members of the same family. But that doesn't mean you can approach them. Unlike many other fierce animals, they don't have huge fear instincts. So regardless of whether they've seen a human before, they will likely have no qualms about biting if you get too close to their nest and eggs. They are incredibly territorial. If you, for some reason, decide to visit the Amazon at night, you'll need to be on high alert, as black caiman are nocturnal. Their black scales in dark water within dark forests means you may not see them until one is literally biting you, so definitely be on the lookout. 
Number 17. Red-Bellied Piranha Red-Bellied Piranhas are scavengers in the Amazon River ecosystems that can grow up to about a foot long and weigh around 4 pounds. You'll generally see them in schools of about 20 or more. As the name suggests, red-bellied piranhas have red bellies, and this red shade extends from their chins and cheeks to their stomachs. They also have silver scales along their sides. Even though they aren't very big, piranhas don't exactly look friendly, and they aren't. They have powerful muscles, razor-sharp teeth, and an incredible bite force with a shearing ability. Fortunately, their diet primarily consists of the fins of other fish, some fish flesh, and basically whatever else they can get. But that doesn't mean they don't try their luck with humans with some devastating consequences. While many attacks have only resulted in minor injuries, red-bellied piranhas have also killed people. An intoxicated 18-year-old man was attacked and killed in Bolivia in 2011, and the following year, a 5-year-old girl in Brazil was also attacked and killed by a shoal of red-bellied piranhas. In 2015, a 6-year-old girl lost her life to a red-bellied piranha attack when her grandmother's boat capsized while they were on vacation in Brazil. The piranhas ate all the flesh from her legs, leading to her death. Number 16. Green Anaconda A small snake can be scary enough, but imagine coming face to face with one that grows up to 17.1 feet long and weighs about 154 pounds. That would be enough to put you in a state of shock, to say the least. Green anacondas are the world's heaviest snakes, and they are also one of the longest in the world. They live in South America and are fortunately non-venomous, so you're not gonna die from getting bitten. But that doesn't mean you won't die by some other means if you end up getting caught on the wrong side of this nope rope. Green anacondas are boa constrictors. They constrict their prey rather than delivering a venomous bite. They wait in the water for their prey to stop by for a drink, then they coil their bodies around the victim, suffocating them until they're ready to eat. They will then swallow them whole. Generally, green anacondas feast on flesh, mammals, birds, and amphibians. They are also cannibals, with recorded cases of large females devouring smaller males. The green anaconda is undoubtedly a deadly monster to small creatures that encounter it, but humans mostly don't need to fear them. Sure, they can kill you, but they mostly don't. There have been very few, if any, human deaths linked to this particular snake, but there's always a first for everything, so, you know, keep your distance. Number 15. Mata Mata Turtle when a creature's name translates to kill kill in Spanish, you probably imagine a man-eating animal that'll make you fear for your life. You see that right there? That, that great smile. Whoa. However, the Mata Mata turtle is only a deadly monster to other animals, not humans, so that's a relief. Mata Mata turtles are freshwater turtles primarily found in the Amazon and Orinoco basins. They are massive, sedentary turtles that can weigh about 46 pounds, and they have flattened heads, a horn on their snouts, three barbels on their chin, and a shell that looks a bit like a piece of bark. They are unusual looking, but they aren't exactly scary looking. That's not to say they aren't scary to creatures they like to eat. They often lie stock still in the water, with their skin flaps allowing them to blend in with the vegetation. Once a fish gets close, they will thrust their heads out of their shells, open their mouths as wide as they can, and basically vacuum suck the fish into their mouth. This is known as suction feeding. Once the fish is inside, they shut their mouth, expel water, and swallow the fish whole. Because of the way their mouth is made, they can't chew, so it's not even like they can decide if they like the taste of something or not, but they just stick to fish and invertebrates. Number 14. Pyara. Pyara, also known as water wolf and saber-toothed tiger fish, don't kill people. They don't have a taste for human flesh or seek humans out as snacks. But that doesn't mean that they aren't monsters. These terrifying fish are the nightmare of many other creatures living in the Amazon basin. We don't know much about them because they're quite mysterious fish, but we do know that they are pretty awful to look at. 
They have long, curved fangs, and these rise from their lower jaws. They can also extend them out by about six inches. They are so big that Pyaras are born with holes in their mouths that their giant teeth can slot into. Aside from their teeth, Pyara are scary in other ways. They are lightning fast in the water because of the shapes of their bodies for power and speed. Even strong currents and rapids don't slow them down since they have caudal fins in the shape of fans to help them move along at great speed. Their size makes them terrifying as well. They can grow up to around 3 feet long and weigh up to about 35 to 40 pounds. But if you were to raise them in captivity in an aquarium, they rarely exceed about 12 inches and weigh about 10 pounds. Number 13. Electric Eel now, because creatures in the Amazon aren't terrifying enough, we now have to go and give them electricity. Electric eels are one of approximately 500 fish types that can produce electricity, and they are found in the Amazon and Orinoco rivers of South America, generally within the muddy, shallow parts. They are closely related to catfish rather than eels, believe it or not, and they can grow up to about 8 feet long and about 44 pounds. Generally, no two electric eels are the same, with some being gray, blue, or black, while others are purple or white. But regardless of their color, they're still a creature you won't want to encounter on your trip to the Amazon. Electric eels produce enough electricity to power about a dozen light bulbs, and their electricity-producing organs take up about 80% of their body. They use it for defense and to kill their prey, and typically use up to about 700 volts, which is five times what you'll find in a standard U.S. wall socket. Even though most people don't come into contact with electric eels, that doesn't mean people don't die from encounters when they happen. If you're shocked, you can fall into the water and drown. So most people don't die from the shock itself, but rather where that shock puts you. Number 12. Candiru. If you thought the only creature to fear in the ocean was a large one with murder on its mind and maybe some sharp teeth, you'd be wrong. Much smaller ones, grown up to about 16 inches long, are also worth fearing. Candiru are native to the Amazon basin and are known as vampire fish and toothpick fish. Even though they can grow up to about 16 inches long, there are some that are much, much smaller and use their powers for evil. There have been many reports over the years of this parasitic freshwater catfish invading and parasitizing the human urethra. That's right, they apparently get right up in there. Reports of this type of behavior date back to around the late 19th century, but the first documented case of a candiru being removed from a urethra wasn't until 19. 1997. It might be reported on, but not everyone is convinced it's true. Apparently, a 23-year-old man from Itacochiara in Brazil said a candiru jumped out of the water into his urethra while he urinated at thigh level in a river. He traveled to Manaus and underwent urological surgery to remove the fish. There were photos, a tape of the cystoscopy procedure, and the body of the fish preserved in formalin, but people were still suspicious. An American marine biologist said simple fluid physics made it impossible for fish to dart out of the water, travel up a urine stream, and enter a human urethra. So we actually don't know if this fish is the monster it's made out to be. Number 11. Bull Shark. A monster that is as bad as it's made out to be is the bull shark. These are also called Zambezi sharks in Africa and the Lake Nicaragua shark in Nicaragua. They are found around the world in warm, shallow waters and are naturally angry and aggressive at absolutely everything. Their blood pressure must be through the roof. Bull sharks are responsible for the majority of nearshore shark attacks and even those that some people claim were other species. Most end up being these guys' handiwork. Bull sharks grow up to about 11 feet long and have a bite force of about 1,330 pound force, which is the highest of all cartilaginous fish we know about. 
so if you're gonna be bit by one, it's probably not gonna be pretty. Probably not surprising, now that you know how vicious they are, it was bull sharks, not great whites, that inspired the book and movie Jaws. These sharks form part of the Big Three, which are three shark species that are known for being capable of inflicting serious injuries on people. On a list of unprovoked attacks around the world, bull sharks come in third place with 117, behind tiger sharks and great white sharks. Number 10. South American Rattlesnake As if we needed any more reason to fear snakes, the South American Rattlesnake is one more. This snake, found in South America, is a venomous pit viper. It can grow up to about 5 feet long and is noticeable by its stripes that start from the base of its head. They also have white or yellowish bellies with light gray spots and often a gray tail. It's important to know what these snakes look like because you're gonna need to run very fast when you see one. They have crotoxin and crotamine neurotoxins in their venom that can have a severe effect on humans. You may start to notice progressive paralysis followed by impaired vision, auditory disorders, drooping eyelids, and life-threatening respiratory paralysis. Many people can also experience skeletal muscle and heart damage, aches, pains, tenderness, and dark urine caused by myoglobin being released into your blood. Generally, renal failure is the leading cause of death. South American rattlesnakes are not the most vicious and deadly snake species of all, but they're definitely pretty high up on the list. You'll want to avoid being bitten by one at all costs. Number 9. Sawfish Sawfish aren't really deadly monsters to us, but they sure look like they could be. They are carpenter sharks from the family of rays that have sharp transverse teeth positioned to look like a saw. They can grow up to 25 feet long, weigh about 1,300 pounds, and live worldwide in brackish, estuarine, and coastal marine waters of subtropical regions. You may also spot them in freshwater rivers and lakes. They aren't really harmful to us, but we are harmful to them. Sawfish are endangered, and this is not helped by the fact that they're slow breeders. They are also hunted for their fins to make shark fin soup, and people kill them for their unique teeth and saw. Like many other species, habitat loss is also a genuine concern. They are now protected in several countries like the United States and Australia, and you can be given fines for catching and not releasing them. You can kind of understand what makes people curious about them, though. They have bodies like sharks, a flat head, and sandpaper-like skin. Their mouths and nostrils are also on the underside of their heads, and they have up to 128 blunt-edged teeth on their upper jaw and up to 176 on the lower. These are arranged in 10 to 12 rows in each jaw and kind of look a bit like a cobblestone road. If you see one, keep your distance. They can inflict horrific injuries with their saw-like teeth when they feel under threat. Number 8. Paku Fish typically have pretty unique, sharp teeth. They're often pointed and look nothing like ours. But the South American Paku fish is different. Its teeth are eerily similar to ours, which makes them look quite comical. Our teeth are pretty strong, so does that mean theirs are? Why? Yes. Yes, they are. The good news is they much prefer plants to flesh, so humans are generally off the menu. But there are other reasons to fear the Paku. They can outcompete native species and also spread diseases and parasites. This is not great when they live in the Amazon and other South American river systems where vulnerable fish also live. In these river systems, Paku mainly eat plants, but they also feast on nuts and food pellets. Their teeth are so strong they can crack into most things. They've also been known to bite humans, so watch your back. A toddler was once bitten at an aquarium in Scotland, but it wasn't believed to be out of aggression or seeing humans as food. The Paku may have just seen the child's wiggling finger as bait and decided to do a taste test. Number 7. Amazon Giant Leech 
It's okay to think leeches are gross. They kind of are. They attach themselves to your skin and can be quite hard to get off. But one leech is a bit more disgusting than others. The Amazon Giant Leech. The Amazon Giant Leech is one of the largest freshwater leeches, growing up to almost 18 inches long and up to 4 inches wide. So not one you want to find on your skin after taking a dip in the water. They are dark gray-brown in color, but younger ones often have stripes down their back and patches of color. You'll likely stumble across these leeches at the Amazon River mouth from Venezuela to the Guianas in coastal wetland marshes. Even though leeches aren't really dangerous to us because they don't take much blood from us or transmit human diseases, they are a threat to other animals. The young leeches start by feasting on amphibians before moving up to caiman, capybaras, domestic cattle, and anacondas. When they are busy eating, you'll find them under rocks or debris in the water where they hang out to digest food and carry their cocoons. Surprisingly, the Amazon giant leech is also an exceptional swimmer. Number 6. Giant Otter Giant otters don't exactly seem like a threat to other animals of the Amazon. They're pretty cute and typically grow no longer than 6 feet and weigh up to 71 pounds. They have small, rounded ears, a fur-covered nose, short and stubby legs, and webbed feet with sharp claws. But as cute and innocent as they might seem to us, other animals will have a different opinion. They are territorial, aggressive, apex predators that will eat everything and anything. Nothing stands in the way of a giant otter. They mainly feed on fish such as piranha and catfish and prefer to hunt in shallow water. Here, they will find large, sedentary fish that are easy to kill. They are also opportunists, which means they won't always wait until their favorite fish arrives. Instead, they'll take what they can get and what's in abundant supply, like crabs, snakes, and even caimans and anacondas. They are a lot fiercer than they look. How they eat is also quite terrifying to watch. They will catch and consume immediately by holding the fish between its forepaws and eating noisily from the head down. They can consume about 10% of their body weight daily. Number 5. Stingray out of all things lurking in rivers of South America, stingrays would have to be one of the most feared species. They may not be the largest thing you'll ever encounter, but they sure can be the deadliest. I mean, we're not going to forget Steve Irwin's death in a hurry. Stingrays can arch their tail forward to launch an attack, with their stinger stabbing your body. A sheath containing venom breaks as the stinger goes in, and poison can flow into your flesh. This venom contains neurotoxins and enzymes that can lead to cell death, muscle contraction, and swelling. Fatalities are rare, but as we know, they can happen. Steve Irwin died in 2006 from a stingray stinger penetrating his thoracic wall, piercing his heart, and causing huge trauma and bleeding. Oh, crazy it was that long ago. His death was only the second recorded since 1945 in Australian waters. Many divers may encounter stingrays on their adventure. It pays to be safe. The most common environment for a diver to be stung is when entering or leaving the ocean in shallow water. You may step on one, which causes the stingray to react. Reduce your risk of being stung by staying out of their striking zone, which is above the stingray. Number 4. Decoy Building Spider Found in South America and pretty much around the world are decoy-building spiders. They are reasonably small orb weaver spiders that have had to come up with a clever way to eat and stay alive, so it decided to become much bigger than it actually is. Confused? Allow me to explain. Decoy building spiders will build a web, then create a fake spider to sit in it. Generally, this spider is quite big and consists of debris, food carcasses, and even its own old skin it had previously shed. It'll even go one step further to make the fake spider as authentic as possible by giving it legs pointed toward the ground. The first such spider was found in a part of the Tombopado River in Peru. Another was found in the Philippines, and both had evolved on their own. Researchers believe that these spiders, and some others like them, use the fake spiders to lure in prey or as a form of defense. I mean, it's pretty clever. You're probably much more likely to stay alive if predators think you're a massive spider rather than a small, weak, and vulnerable one. Number 3. Arapaima 
Arupaima, which also gets called Paiche and Piraruku, are large, bony tonguefish native to South America's Amazon and Essequibo basins. They are some of the largest freshwater fish in the world and grow up to nearly 10 feet long while reaching weights of about 440 pounds. As their numbers are dwindling and people fish them for their tongues and boneless steaks, it's really hard to see them as monsters. However, there's a reason this fish has appeared on the TV show River Monsters. In the first season, called Amazon Assassins, the host, Jeremy Wade, traveled to the Amazon to find what had been reportedly hitting the canoes of locals and causing people to drown. He ended up being hit in the chest by an Arapaima, but fortunately not with full force. He managed to catch a mature female in a nearby swamp. In another episode, Jeremy also looked into the Sobral Santos disaster, which followed the 1981 shipwreck of a riverboat that saw over 300 people die. He wanted to see whether the Arapaima could have been the culprit, but it is more prevalent in shallow lakes than in main river channels. Arapaima also don't see humans as prey and will generally only attack when they feel that they or their offspring are under threat. Number 2. Poison Dart Frog Poison dart frogs definitely stand out in the Amazon. The many different species have some incredible patterns and colors that almost don't look real. But they aren't there for our enjoyment. The colors are to warn predators that they are toxic, dangerous, and shouldn't be messed with. Poison frogs are native to Central America and South America and mostly live on the rainforest floor. Some also live in the trees. Some species actually aren't toxic at all, but most have poison in their skin that can cause swelling, nausea, and paralysis if you touch or eat it. There is one poison frog that can kill you, though, and that's the golden poison dart frog. Their skin is so toxic that it's enough poison to kill up to 10 or 20 grown men. One milligram is all it takes. They are one of the most poisonous animals on the planet, and the indigenous Embera people in Colombia use their venom for blowgun darts. Researchers are naturally curious about their toxin and wouldn't mind using it for drug research, but it is incredibly difficult to get. They also estimate estimated that there are only around 170 milligrams of the toxin left in the world. They've now been able to synthesize the toxin to work with it a little more without having to rely on the frogs. Number 1. Side-necked turtle. Side-necked turtles, which you may have heard referred to as Austro-South American side-necked turtles, are turtles living in Australia, New Guinea, Indonesia, and most of South America. Their fossil history dates back to the Cretaceous period, and they pretty much look as fossilized today as they do when they're actually dead. These unique turtles position their necks sideways in their shells, hence the name, whereas many other species fold their necks vertically. These turtles are also aquatic with webbed feet and can stay submerged in the water for long periods. They don't look all that fierce, but they can be. They may only be capable of scratching humans with their claws, but they're pretty fierce when it comes to securing snacks since they are strike and gape hunters. Some side-necked turtles can also be foragers, and they eat fish, invertebrates, and gastropods. Although they're also opportunists, which means they'll eat many different food types to survive, including fruit. They usually don't grow very big, with some of the smaller species measuring about 6 inches long, but white-throated snapping turtles in the same family can measure nearly 18 inches long. If you ever once thought you'd like to pay a visit to the Amazon, I'm curious about whether you still want to now. It seems like everything in there wants to cause you harm. Would you still go? Which creature would you be scared about encountering? Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time!